When children fail, the Torah says in Parshas Bereishis, Beis Yud Zayin, "Ve'yas Hashem Eloikim la Adam ule Ishtoi Kosnois Oir Ve'yal Bishem." Hashem made leather garments for Adam and his wife, and he clothed them. After eating from the forbidden fruit, Adam and Chava realized that they were not wearing any clothing. So, what did they do? They actually tried to make clothing for themselves by sewing fig leaves together. That's right, leaves. Hashem was watching the situation unfold. It was pretty sad and a little funny seeing them figure out how to sew leaves together and trying to tailor them to actually stay on and fit properly. Then the Torah tells us something absolutely remarkable: Hashem came to the rescue and He made leather garments for them to wear. Katnois oir quotes Harav Bachia ben Asher Evan Chalawa, Zeichet Tzadik Livracha, who lived from 1955 to 1340, known as Rebbeinu Bachaya. Asa lehem malbushim muulim benichbodim derech kavoid ki haya kavoidam nichlima im yamdu ba oisan charoigais she asu lehem lechasais basar erva bilvad. He explains that not only did Hashem make clothing for them. He made expensive and honorable clothing, since it would be embarrassing for them to walk around with a little fig leaf clothing that didn't cover them properly. This is amazing. The chinuch questions that we should all have are: number one, what did they do to earn this personal treatment? Especially considering that the only reason they needed clothing was because they had openly defied the will of Hashem. Did Hashem reward bad behavior? What kind of a lesson would he be giving the human race for the rest of time by bailing them out of the natural consequences of their actions? Isn't it healthy for children to learn the natural consequences of their actions and not have daddy come and rescue them after they fail and mess up? Number two, even if Hashem wanted to help them out, why didn't he just give them instructions on how to make garments? He could have told them that instead of leaves, they might want to think about using the skin of those sheep wandering around. Why did he bother making the clothing for them himself? Three, even if Hashem wanted to make them clothing, why didn't he just throw down cheap secondhand stuff from the ninety-nine cent store? What exactly did they do to deserve expensive and honourable clothing? They had just finished destroying Hashem's beautiful world. Four. Last but not least, it says Vayal be shame, and he dressed them. Why did Hashem have to actually put the new clothes on them? Why couldn't he let them figure out how to put them on? What did they do to earn this fancy upscale treatment? So Rabbeinu Bachaya says, "Rotza liyaches puulas hal bosha elav yisporach lehoydos al ahavasoi vechem losoi." Al Yitzurov Sheaf Al Pi Shechatu Loi Zaz Me Chabavon. Rabbeinu Bechayer explains that Hashem was concerned that Adam and Chava might have mistakenly thought that since they messed up so badly, Hashem no longer cared about them, and that wrong attitude would have been passed down to their children, and the entire world would have been founded on the false impression that Hashem doesn't care about us humans any more since we sinned and messed up. Therefore, Hashem performed this menial tailoring task himself, specifically to prove to Adam and Chava that Afal Pi Shechatu, even though you sinned against my explicit command, Loi Zaz Me Chabavon, my love and care for you are not diminished. This is incredible. The only reason they even needed clothing to begin with was because they had rebelled against Hashem's specific instructions. Still, now that this was their current need. Hashem hooked them up in the most VIP way. Why? Because had Hashem not helped them like this, they would have mistakenly thought, "Of course, Hashem loved us and cared for us when we acted like good kids. But once we messed up, He no longer cares about us about us as much." That dangerously wrong attitude would have been passed down, and the entire world would have been founded on the false impression that Hashem doesn't care about us humans anymore. We hear teens claim all the time that their father or mother hates them. We know that it can't be true, but sadly, they can really believe it.